Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Continue by Continue.dev, which is an open source co-pilot alternative. They let you use pretty much any kind of provider that you want, but in this case, we're going to be using Olama. And if you've seen any of the other videos, you know that Olama lets you download and use as many open source models as your computer can provide you. So here are a few of the ones that I'm currently testing. Um, you can have pretty much as many as your hard drive will hold and as big as a size as your computer can run. Now installing Continue is super simple. All you have to do is go to the VS Code extensions uh, marketplace and look for Continue, and it's gonna be this one right here. And you can install it. There are two versions, the release version and the pre-release version, with the pre-release version supporting a uh, tab to autocomplete, but it didn't end up working for me, so I'm just using the regular release version. And once it's installed, you'll get this new tab uh, added to your toolbar and that will be this right here, this continue tab. In order to configure it to use Olama, all we have to do is go down to the bottom and click on that config icon and it will open this config.json. And what this does is it allows you to add all the different models that you want to use. And by telling it that you're using the Olama provider, it automatically knows that you're going to be using this API endpoint, which is the default Olama. And if you're curious if your Olama is pointing to the right place, then you can go back to the extensions marketplace and look for continue by clicking the gear icon and extension settings. And then that way you can change this to whatever you want. So if you have Olama hosted on a different machine, this is where you could change that. Now, as far as the settings uh, go for setting up a llama with this, this is pretty much it. You just add whatever models you actually want to use. And the only other thing that you might want to tweak later is embeddings, but we'll touch on that in a second. So going back to the continue panel on the left, how do we actually use this? So it has four main functions or shortcuts that you actually want to use, with the first one being Command M, which will always open this uh, thing on the left, this chat box on the left for you to do things and ask questions. Um, it serves pretty much the same purpose as the uh, AI chat assistant uh, bot thing that uh, Zed had, but here you're chatting with the LLM of your cho choosing. In this case, these are the ones that we set up in the config file, and we could talk to any of these. So if I set it to Deep Sea Coder 1.8 and say, uh, how do I start up Blask? Then it will automatically have a conversation with that specific LLM. And if I want to switch it at any point, I can just go through here and do that. Now I'm going to start a new conversation just because we don't need that right there. The other use case for this is generating code right inside of your file. If I use the shortcut key, Command Shift L, then I have the same chat box that's on the left, but it's attaching itself specifically to this file. So continue has a predefined set of slash commands and you can add your own if you want to, but these are some of the few that you'll use most often and they allow you to do things like edit the highlighted code or write comments for code. And that's what we're gonna to use to start off this file. Okay, so I just switched over to Deep Sea Coder 6.7b and I'm going to type in Command Shift L and slash edit to start off the slash command and say, start me off with a Flask API with four endpoints and each has JWT authentication, authentication. And uh, we'll leave it at that. So start me off and then you click enter and it's gonna go to town writing it right inside of your app, in, right inside of your file. So once it's done, we can actually choose to accept or reject. And there's also a little uh, tooltip here, Command Shift Enter will accept all and can Command Shift Delete, uh, in this case, will reject them all. So I'm going to type in Command Shift Enter to accept everything. And sometimes a little tooltip thing doesn't go away and that might just be a bug. Uh, I've noticed that sometimes it happens when there's a white space at the end or some of these kind of code uh, markdown code blocks from its parsing, but you can see now it went away. And this more or less looks correct. We're gonna assume that it's correct for the sake of the rest of the demo. The other things you can do is you can select pieces of code and basically chat about those. So you're essentially selecting code to use as context. So in this case, I can select this login function and command M, and then you can ask questions about it. So we can say, what is happening here? And again, we're still using Deep Sea Coder. We haven't changed. So we can get an explanation of what exactly is happening here. And maybe we can even rewrite it. So we ask what's happening here and it's spitting out uh, what it thinks is actually going on there. We can actually keep asking follow-up questions. So is there a better way to write it more 
concisely. And this is completely offline. I am connected to the internet for the only reason to get the documentation, but this does not need anything to actually function. So we can see that it actually spit out some code that is mildly different from what we have. Uh, I think this is the only thing that's really changing. So we're saying if the username and password uh, exists essentially. So uh, if we want to, we can apply to the current file. I don't like doing it this way because you'll see that it, yeah, see, so sometimes it will add duplicate information. It'll still do the thing that it was supposed to do, but then it'll, it'll kind of mess up everything else. In this case, it actually didn't get anything right because the thing that we were looking to change actually was right here and it didn't do it. So I'm going to command shift delete to reject all of that. And what we can do instead is right in the file, just do the same thing. So command shift L this time, and we'll do it right here. We'll type in slash edit. We want to uh, rewrite this function to be more concise and also add code comments. And it'll go through in a git style and give us some stuff that we can accept or reject depending on how we see it. Or again, we could do the same thing where we are command shift enter to accept everything. So I think it finished. I'm gonna command shift enter to accept everything and this stuff down here um, it seems like it's the code comment, but it's not actually commented in the right place. I think it might just have to do with this specific LLM and the order in which we typed the prompt, making it at it at the end after it was done. Um, there is actually another thing that we can do for code comments, which is another one of their slash commands. So I just went ahead and removed all the comments on the function. And if I select it again, command shift L, we could try out comment, right? Comments function and once I click enter we could see that it added comments to everything uh, we are having an issue here where a request is not uh, import request from flask and that should fix that and there we go it added comments so we could see that it added uh, you know this is the thing for handling requests expects JSON which is what's going on here um, and then it returns 400 if it doesn't have correct authentication so that's fine so I'm gonna start a new chat over here and this time we're gonna look at what context is all about if we type in the at symbol we can see that it gives us a few different things to basically interact with and add to context so if I click on files and then main.py, it means that we can ask questions specifically about what's going on in main.py. So I could say things like, how are we handling authentication? And it'll actually go through the file and we'll get a response based on what's actually in the file. So it tells us right here we're using JWT authentication, which is correct. We could see the information for our login uh, endpoint and all the other stuff. So this is a quick way for you to chat with any specific file. You can also chat with open files. This is what they call context providers. And if we look at their documentation, we can see that they have a, a pretty good amount of defaults, but you can also add your own. So if there's stuff that you need specifically for your kind of work, you could do it via the config.typescript file where you can add all your custom logic. But for the sake of this quick demo, I think that's that's enough. The other thing we could take a look at in the config.json is the fact that the embeddings provider that I pointed out earlier is also how you create the embeddings for this context up here. So if you want to chat with your code base, there's also an add code base and you can essentially chat with it and it's going to index your files based on your Git configuration for the project. It's going to respect your Git ignore. So any files that are in the Git ignore to be ignored will not get uh, indexed. But this is another thing I'm still testing out. Uh, it's just worth noting that it's there. And then these are the other context providers where you can add your own. The only other thing I would note that's important for you to set up once you get going with this is going to the extension settings again and make sure that you turn off uh, telemetry if you don't want things tracked like, you know, correct data usage or, you know, any of that stuff. Once you turn telemetry off, you won't be able to submit these helpful, unhelpful things, I believe. But, you know, if you don't want anything being tracked at all, that's just, it's worth noting that that's a thing that you can turn off. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. This was just 
just a very quick look at this. I think this is enough to get you going and coding, especially offline with Olama. This is very snappy. It's very well full featured. So I think you guys will enjoy it. If there's anything that I missed or if there's anything that you want to see me use this with, uh, be sure to leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next video.